In this tutorial, I will explain what the NEC antenna modeling software is and how to use the 4NEC2 antenna modeling software. On internet and YouTube, you can find tutorials how to build certain antennas. But often I wonder what is the performance of these antennas? What if I use a slightly different wire diameter or slightly change the length of a particular wire? Will these changes impact antenna performance significantly or not at all? Using an antenna modeling software can help you to answer these questions without having to build the actual antenna right away. NEC, which stands for Numerical Electromagnetics Code, is a popular antenna modeling software system for wire and surface antennas and simulates the electromagnetic response of antennas and metal structures. The accuracy of the calculation depends on how well you model the antenna and the information you provide with regard to the ground and wire conductivity. But be aware, in the real world using the actual antenna, the result will be slightly different compared to the simulation. This is caused by reflections, weather conditions, where the antenna is mounted, etc. For the LoRa LoRa 1 tutorials, I have built several simple antennas, which I will demonstrate in upcoming tutorials. And I have modeled these antennas. To my surprise, most of these antennas behaves as predicted by the antenna modeling software. If you are planning to build your own antenna, I highly recommend that you first model your antenna before actually building it. It will save you time, money and frustration. For example, I used a steel coat hanger with a 3mm wire diameter to build an antenna. I spent 2 hours to remove the plastic coating and cutting the antenna elements to their correct lengths. When I finished building the antenna, I used the N1201 SA antenna analyzer to check the fissoir. The result was not great. My antenna has a fissoir of 3. I decided to use an antenna modeling software to check what I have done wrong. By changing certain antenna parameters in the model, I concluded that I used the wrong wire diameter. Instead of 3 mm, I should have used a wire diameter of 1.8 mm to get a fissoir less than 2. The antenna modeling software also provides the horizontal and vertical antenna radiation patterns. These radiation patterns are just as important as the fissoir. What if the main lobe is pointing upwards instead of sideways? If your sensors and gateways are located on a flat area, then this antenna will not perform great. Here are a few NEC antenna modeling software. EC NEC, which is available for Windows, it has a free and a paid version. The free version has a 20 segments limit. 4 NEC 2, which is available for Windows and it is free. This tool has many options. And Coco NEC, which is available for Mac OS X and it's free. This tool has limited options. I have used Coco NEC, but I encountered problems when trying to model a normal mode helical antenna. I have modeled this normal mode helical antenna with the 4NEC2 program. So I ended up using 4NEC2, which I highly recommend. Unfortunately, it is only available for Windows. The previous mentioned 3 antenna modeling software uses the NEC2 engine, which does all the calculations. NEC was developed by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in the 1970s and is an antenna modeling system for wire and surface antennas. More information about NEC2, see this link. The NEC2 documentation is composed of three sections. Part 1 is the NEC program description, which explains the theory. Part 2 explains the code. And Part 3 is the NEC user's guide. Part 3 is the documentation you need. This is the NEC Part 3 User's Guide. In this guide you can find all the card types, as you can see over here. And here you can find the NEC2 Quick Reference. This is the NEC2 Quick Reference. I have copied this from the 4NEC2 application. In general, most antenna modeling software provides two input methods. Using a spreadsheet style editor, as you can see here, 
and using a simple text editor, as you can see over here. How does it work? If you use the spreadsheet method, the antenna modeling software reads the spreadsheet and outputs the card deck, this card deck. And this card deck is used as input for the NEC2 engine, which output the results, as you can see over here. There are antenna modeling software available, for example, for NEC2, where you can model the antenna by drawing it using a graphical user interface, as you can see over here. I will demonstrate this in the next slides. First, install the 4NEC2 program. Go to this website and download this file. The downloaded zip file contains this executable file. Unzip this file. Then install the 4NEC2 program by double clicking this setup file. 4NEC2 can be installed on any directory, for example, this folder. In the installation folder, you can find the getting started guide, the complete NEC2 manual part 3 user's guide, and the NEC2 short reference card. The complete 4 NEC2 help in document format can be found in this folder. And in this folder, you can find many antenna model examples. This is my half wave dipole antenna. It is made of a coax type N flange mount. This is from a terminal strip block. And these stainless steel wires are from an umbrella. This is a half wave dipole. So from here to here is a quarter wavelength. And from here to here is also a quarter wavelength. And this is the feed point. This is a half wave dipole antenna for 868 MHz. Now let's model this antenna. By the way, you normally model the antenna first before you build the antenna. If you model the antenna, first make a drawing. This is the half wave dipole antenna, and this is the feed point. The feed point is at the center of the half wave dipole antenna. This is its length which is a half wavelength. The dipole antenna is modeled on the z-axis at a certain height. The half wave dipole antenna will be modeled for 868 MHz. It is made of stainless steel. The length is 0.73 meters. This is the same as a half wavelength. The wire diameter is 1.8 millimeters, which means the wire radius is 0.9 millimeters. The antenna will be positioned 1 cm above ground. Please note, this is not a realistic value. Between these two coordinates, a wire will be drawn. This is the first coordinate, and this is the second coordinate. This is the x, y, and z value, and all values are in meters. Start the 4NEC2 program. Close all windows except the main window. In the main menu, select Settings, Length Unit, select Meters, Radius Unit, select Millimeters, Enable Geometry Edit, and Enable Auto Segmentation. Open the Geometry Editor by pressing the buttons Ctrl F3. In this window, select Options, select Set Segmentation and select Medium 25. First an explanation about segments. An antenna consists of wires and each wire is subdivided into segments. Here is the half-wave dipole antenna and a wire is drawn between two points. 
In this example, the wire is divided into seven segments, and the segment always starts with number one. This is one segment. In this example, the feed point is located at segment number four. The feed point is located at the center of the wire. If the feed point is located in the middle of a wire, the number of segments must be an odd number. The number of segments is 7, which is an odd number, so the feed point can be located at segment number 4, which is in the center of the wire. If the wire is subdivided into 6 segments, then the feed point cannot be located at the center of the wire. The feed point is off-center because we use an even number of segments. This is not good. If the feed point is located at the end of a wire, then the number of segments can be an odd or an even number. It does not matter. Here you see a quarter wave ground plane antenna. A quarter wave ground plane antenna has four radials and the feed point is located here. In this case, it does not matter if you use an odd or an even number of segments. You can let the 4NEC2 program to automatically calculate the number of segments. But you can do it yourself, but it is not recommended. There are certain rules you must follow. If the number of segments is too low, the calculations are not accurate. If it is too high, the calculations take a lot of time. The length of each segment must lie between 5% and 10% of the wavelength. If the ratio of segment length to wire radius is greater than 8, the NEC engine simulates the current flow in the wire as a very thin current thread. The NEC engine uses the default thin wire kernel. In such a case, do not use the EK card. If the ratio is between 2 and 8, the NEC engine should simulate the current to be evenly distributed on the circumference of the wire for a more accurate result. In this situation, you should use the EK card. Never make the ratio go below 2. Here are the rules again. Rule number 1. Segment length must lie between 5% of the wavelength and 10% of the wavelength. Rule number 2. The ratio is segment length divided by the wire radius. If the ratio is between 2 and 8, use the EK card. If the ratio is greater than 8, do not use the EK card. Here's an example. Let's assume the frequency is 868 MHz, thus the wavelength is 345.38 mm. The wire length is 175 mm and the wire diameter is 1.8 mm. So the question is, can the wire be divided in 8 segments and should EK card be used or not? Let's apply rule 1 and 2. First calculate 5% of the wavelength and 10% of the wavelength. That's these two values. And let's calculate the segment length. So the segment length is the wire length divided by the number of segments, which is 175 divided by 8 is 21.87 millimeters. That is the segment length. As you can see, this segment length lies between these two values. So the number of segments, which is 8, is correctly chosen. Now let's see if we should use the EK card or not. Let's calculate the ratio. The ratio is the segment length divided by the wire radius. So the ratio is 21.87 divided by 0 0.9 is 24.3, which means the ratio is greater than 8, which means do not use the EK card. If you use the EK card, it specifies the use of the extended thin wire kernel. EK stands for extended kernel. Here's an example how you use the EK card. EK0 for example. Zero or blank means use the extended thin wire kernel, which applies for a ratio between 2 and 8. If this value is minus 1 or no EK card at all, means use the standard thin wire kernel. This applies for a ratio greater than 8. I understand if the segment's explanation does not make sense to you, and that is understandable. But if you specify the segments yourself, and you encounter errors, then please watch this video again. Select Options. Do not select No Auto Segmentation. Select Set Field Separator and select Tab. And do not write symbols slash variables. 
select file new and select file save as enter dipole underscore demo dot nec press the save button change the frequency to 868 MHz press the enter key select file save open the file these are card types the first card type is CE. Use the CE card to specify the end of the comment section. CE stands for comment end. Here's an example how to use it. This is the GE card type. Use the GE card to specify the end of the geometry input. GE stands for geometry end. Here's an example how to use it. Zero means no ground. 1 means ground plane present. Here's an example of a ground plane. And if you use value minus 1, it means ground present. Wire ends are not connected to ground. And the GN card is required. This is the FR card type. Use the NEC FR card to specify the design frequency. FR stands for frequency. Here is an example how to use it. This value means type of frequency stepping, 0 for linear and 1 for logarithmic. This value means the number of steps. These two values are unused. Here you specify the start frequency, and this value represents the frequency stepping increment. Let's model the antenna. This is the geometry edit menu bar. If you want to view your model in 3D, Select the 3D view button. If you want to view your model in the XZ plane, select the XZ plane button. If you want to view your model in the YZ plane, select the YZ plane button. If you want to view your model in the XY plane, select the XY plane button. This is the add new object button, the select object button, and the delete object button. This is the wire geometry button to add wires. This is the voltage current sources button. This is the RLC loading button, for example, to add wire conductivity. And this is the transmission lines button to add the transmission line. This is the comments wire data button to add comments or wire data. This is the frequency button to enter your design frequency or if you want to enable the use of extended thin wire kernel. And this is the ground parameters button to specify the ground type. If you want to add an object, press the Add button and then one of these objects. If you want to select an object on the screen, select this button and then one of these four buttons and then you can select the object. To delete an object, first select an object and then press this button. First select XZ plane. Select this button to draw a wire and press the Add button. Draw a vertical line on the z-axis and enter radius 0.9 millimeters. Press the Enter button. Change this z-value to 0.01. Press Enter. And change this value to 0.183. That is the second endpoint. Press the Enter key. As you can see, the length is 0.173 meters, and that is correct. If you click on this field, you will see that the wire is subdivided into 21 segments. This is automatically done. This wire has tag number 1. Press the F3 button to open the geometry window. Select Show Segments, and you can see the segments on this wire. Use these keyboard keys to rotate, zoom, or move your model. Visually check the model, and it looks okay. Select validate and select run geometry check. There are no warnings. This is good. And select validate and select 
run segment checks. And there are no errors or warnings found, and that is good. Select File and Save File. As you can see, the GW card type is created. Use the NEC GW card to specify the wire dimensions. GW stands for Geometry Wire. Here's an example how to use it. Every element has a unique integer number. This wire element is subdivided into 21 segments. This is the X, Y and Z coordinate of the first point. And this is the X, Y and Z coordinate of the second point. And this is the wire radius. Let's add a transmission line. First draw a line. I have drawn a line with these coordinates. Save this file. Add a transmission line. Select this button. And press add. Click this line. And drag to the other line. Release the mouse button. And as you can see, a transmission line is created between the two wires. So what have I done? This is our dipole antenna. And I created a small wire over here. This wire has tag number two and divided into three segments. Between this wire and our dipole antenna, a transmission line is created. This transmission line has an impedance of 50 ohms. Save this file. This is the card for the second line, and this is the card for the transmission line. Use the NEC TL card to specify the transmission line. TL stands for transmission line. Here is an example how to use it. This is the tag number of wire 1. This is a segment number of wire 1. This is a tag number of wire 2. And this is a segment number of wire 2. This value is the impedance in ohms. And this is the length of the transmission line in meters. In all my antenna models, I never modeled the transmission line. For demonstration purpose, I have shown how this is done in case you need it. I will now delete the transmission line and the small wire with tag number 2. So this is selected. Press the delete button. As you can see, the transmission line is deleted. Select this button and select this button to select this line and press the delete button. As you can see, the second line is deleted. Save this file. Now let's add a voltage or current source. Select this button and the add button. Select voltage and you can see the voltage source is added at segment 11 which is the center of the wire. Use these default values and enable fixed power level. Save the file. As you can see, the EX card type is created. Use the NEC EX card to specify the voltage or current source. EX stands for excitation. Here's an example how to use this. If you use zero, it means voltage source. If you use six, it means current source. This is a tag number. This is a segment number. This value is unused. If you use the voltage source, then this represents the real volts. If you use a current source, then this represents real amps. If you use a voltage source, then this is the imaginary volts. And if you use a current source, then this represents the imaginary amps. By the way, in my antenna models, I'm always using a voltage source with these values. Now let's add wire conductivity. Select this button and select the add button. Save this file. As you can see, the loading card type is created. By default, a perfect wire is used with zero loss. Use the NEC LD card to specify the wire conductivity. 
LD stands for loading. Here's an example how to use it. Use loading type 5 to specify the wire conductivity. This is a tag number referring to a specific element. If tag number is 0, all elements have the same material conductivity. When both numbers are 0, all segments of the wire element will have the wire conductivity. This is the electrical conductance in mole per meter, and this value is not used. The SI unit for electrical conductance is Siemens per meter. The archaic term for this unit is mo, that is ohm spelled backwards. One mo is equal to one Siemens. Here is a table with often used material electrical conductances. The source is from the 4NEC2 program. Now let's specify ground parameters. and save to file. As you can see, the ground card type is modified. So you can choose between five ground types. All ground types extends indefinitely to the horizon. The first ground type is free space with the value minus one. There is an absence of any surface beneath the antenna. There is no ground influence. The antenna radiates in all directions without reflections. Use this option to compare antennas of similar types. The second ground type is fast ground with value zero. You can model a ground screen by specifying the number of radials, etc. at Z is zero. Vertical and horizontal wires should not touch the ground. Horizontal wires should be at least one tenth of the wavelength above ground. The third ground type is perfect ground with value one. This ground has perfect conductivity, no losses. The ground acts like a mirror and creates an image antenna identical to the original. Horizontal wires should not touch the ground and should be above ground by a certain factor. See this equation. Vertical wires may touch the ground. This is the fourth ground type. It's real ground with value 2. This ground type is also called Sommerfeld Norton. Use this ground type for the highest accuracy of results for antenna models above ground. Vertical and horizontal wires should not touch the ground. Horizontal wires should be at least 1 200th the wavelength above ground. Specify the ground conductivity near the antenna. You can also specify a second ground type that extends a specified radius. And this is the fifth and final ground type, mini NEC ground with value 3. When wires are connected to a real ground or fast ground, the reported antenna impedance is usually unpredictable. To avoid this, use a real ground with an elevated radial system or, when using verticals, use the mini NEC ground type. Vertical wires may touch the ground. Horizontal wires should be at least one-fifth the wavelength above ground. This is just an overview of what I have previously explained. Use the NEC GN card to specify the ground parameters. GN stands for ground. Here is an example how to use it. Specify the ground type. Minus 1 is free space, 0 is fast ground, 1 is perfect ground, 2 is real ground or Sommerfeld Norton, and 3 is mini NEC ground. Specify the number of radial wires in the ground or 0 meaning no ground screen. These two values are unused. This is the dielectric constant of the ground, leave blank in case of a perfect ground. And this is the conductivity in moles per meter of the ground, leave blank in case of a perfect ground. When in free space, just use GN-1, and when using perfect ground, just use GN-1. Here are three tables with the ground types, with corresponding dielectric constant, and the conductivity in moles per meter. The source is from the 4NEC2 program. Press the calculate button to run the NEC engine. Select far field pattern, select full, resolution is 5 degrees, 
press the generate button. In the main window, you can see the calculated SWR, which is 2.64. In the pattern window, you can see the vertical plane radiation pattern. And if you press the space bar, you can see the horizontal plane radiation pattern. Press the space bar again, you will go back to the vertical plane. If you click on the blue line, you can see the gain at this particular angle. If you drag the mouse, if you drag the mouse, you can see the gains at different angles. In the horizontal plane, the azimuth angle is the angle measured counterclockwise of the x-axis, this direction. The azimuth angle symbol is phi, and phi runs from 0 to 360 degrees. In the vertical plane, the elevation angle is the angle measured of the z-axis, this direction. The elevation angle symbol is theta, and theta runs from 0 to 180 degrees. In the other direction is from 0 to minus 180 degrees. These angles are based on the 4NEC2 antenna modeling software and can differ with other software systems. In the horizontal plane, this angle phi is called the azimuth angle, and in the vertical plane, this angle is called theta and is the elevation angle. Here's another example. This is the vertical plane. The maximum gain is 6.18 dBi, as you can see here, at an azimuth angle of 0 degrees and at an elevation angle of 25 degrees, as you can see over here, 25 degrees. Select the main menu and press the 3D button. Select Pattern, and you can see the radiation pattern. Close this window. This is the Geometry window, and here is the Pattern window. In the Geometry window, select Show, and select Near slash Far Field. In the Pattern window, change to the Vertical Plane. If I drag my mouse on the right screen, you will see the same on the left screen. Select the main window and press the Show Smith Chart button. This is the Smith Chart. Close this window. As you can see, the SWR is 2.64, which is too high. I will now optimize the antenna. This is the NEC file. I've made the following changes. I have added this comment. I created these two symbols and make changes to this card. In the main window, select Edit and input this file. In the Geometry Edit window, select File and select the NEC file and press the Calculate button. Select Far Field Pattern. Full and resolution is 5 degrees. Press the generate button. And the result must be the same because we didn't make any real changes. I've replaced the original values with variables or symbols. As you can see, I did not change these coordinates. I only replaced it with variables. That is why I still get the same results. Now close all windows except the main window. Select Calculate and select Start Optimizer. To use the optimizer, the model requires at least one variable, aka symbol, to optimize. I've created two variables, the length and height. Select Optimize and select the length. I only want to change the length. Set the weighing factor to 100 for SWR and gain and press the start button.
if you look at this result, the SWR is 1.65 and the gain is 0 0.2 when the length is 0 0.1609. So I like this result. I press update NEC file. Press the save button. Yes. And press the exit button. As you can see, it has changed the length. Let's run the NEC engine again. Press this button to verify if you get the same SWR. Far field, full, resolution is 5. Press generate. Yes, as you can see, the SWR is now 1.65. And this is a good result. Press the calculate button. Select frequency sweep. Select gain. Okay, set resolution 5 degrees, start frequency is 850 megahertz, and stop frequency is 880 megahertz, and the step is 1. Press the generate button. As you can see, at this frequency range, the SWR remains under 2. If you select Gain, and here are the gains for these frequencies. Close this window. And this window. I have demonstrated how you can model antenna using a graphical user interface, model an antenna using a simple text editor, but you can also use a spreadsheet style editor. Using this option, NEC Editor New. If you select this option, if I press this button, it will open the setting set here. This is a spreadsheet style editor. Here are the symbols. Here is how you specify the geometry. Here's the tag, the number of segments, the X, Y, Z coordinate of the start point the x, y, z coordinate of the end point, and here is the radius. Pretty straightforward. Here you can see the source, added to tag 1, at segment 11, and here you can specify the load. Here you can set the frequency, the ground, and the ground type, and here you can enter comments. If you make any changes here, and save the changes, then this file will be updated. If you want to model complex shapes, open the build tool and you can easily model a patch, plane, box, cylinder, parabola, helix and sphere. I will not demonstrate how to use this tool. 4NEC2 software allows inline comments using single quotes and symbol cards but these are for NEC2 specific and is not part of the NEC2 specification. Other software such as Coco NEC will not run when they encounter symbol cards. Here's an example. This card deck cannot be run in Coco NEC because it uses symbol cards and inline commands. These symbol cards and these inline commands. By the way, these inline commands can be added at the end of this card. You can use arithmetic operators, trigonometric functions, mathematical functions, and predefined identifiers in the symbol cards. These are the arithmetic operators you can use. These are the trigonometric functions you can use. These are the mathematical functions you can use. More mathematical functions. And here are predefined identifiers. Here's an example how to use predefined identifiers. If you specify 100 centimeter, which is the same as 1 meter. Or if you use A is pi, A has this value. You can also use American wire gauges. You can only use value 0 to 20. A equals hash 20 is the same as 0 0.000406 meters. 
I have created this American wire gauges to metric sizes table. Please note, 4NEC2 only uses the predefined values 0 to 20. When you model an antenna, do not cross the wires. Here's an example of a quarter wave ground plane antenna. This antenna model consists of five wires. One, two, three, four, and five. And not one, two, three. If you create two wires, it will cross. Do not cross wires. And do not model elements below the ground. Coco NEC has several limitations which other antenna modeling software does not have. For example, you cannot model helixes in the spreadsheet, and helixes are not displayed in the 3D model. It is important to see all your antenna elements in 3D to verify if your antenna is correctly modeled. In Coco NEC and 4 NEC2, wire radius can be entered in American wire gauge format, as explained earlier. For example, hash 12. In Coco NEC, helixes are not displayed in the 3D model. In 4 NEC2, helixes are displayed in the 3D model, as you can see over here. More information about 4 NEC2, see this website. You can find links to more tutorials. These tutorials. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.